Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I have just discovered the AJ-23 Transtar. Uh, I've heard of Transtar before but I didn't know that we had a special engine here that was pump-fed, a pump-fed variant of the AJ-10 that still has 500 ignitions. Um, it seems like it wouldn't have 500 ignitions. It's a high performance upper stage and tug, okay. Um, same nozzle and combustion chamber, but turbo machinery installed in place of the pressure fed system. But you know, the the huge amount of ignition sort of goes with the pressure fed system to some extent. Uh, but anyway, it has the same thrust, but it has 334 seconds of ISP and still uses MH and Mon 3. Now, I was allowed to use the AJ-10-190 as the European Space Agency because it is used on the service module of Orion and that is uh, constructed by the European Space Agency. So uh, we got to take advantage of that little crossover. Uh, but I don't know if I'm allowed to use this. We still have to unlock it. It's an uh, entry cost of 70000 but it's sure worth it. Uh, putting it on here, we've got the Transstars on here, four of them in place of the AJ-10-190s. Uh, I get the same delta V, but we cut off like three tons. So, and it's still hypergolic fuel, of course, so that's nice. And so I've made this smaller. I could get more delta V out of it if I wanted to, but it's better to be light and get a better thrust weight ratio. I think somebody in the comments noted that we're really cutting it close on the thrust weight ratio. And yeah, that's true. Uh, that was, it was about the limit. I mean, probably I should be slapping more engines on, but in this case we've cut down the amount of fuel we need to carry by get, getting a more efficient engine. And there's no real downside because it has the same rated burn time, uh, same number of ignitions, same thrust, and same mass. No, no, it's a little bit heavier. I take it. They at least accounted for some pump mass. Uh, one thing that's interesting is some of the other configurations. For something that was cancelled, it sure has a lot of extra configurations. Uh, it wasn't even... Uh, I, I guess uh, one flew on a Titan launch dispenser, but that's it. And uh, There's a Hydrolox one that gets 13.3 kilonewtons, but a 483 second ISP? 483 second ISP and 500 ignitions? Hmm... I mean, obviously that'd be wonderful, but uh, yeah, that's very hypothetical right there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, anyway, I think, I mean, should we assume that the European Space Agency could get this one? I don't know, but I'll build one. Why not? So we're, we're going to try that uh, while our missions are doing their thing on approach to Mars. We'll... Well, let me just temporarily bring that little girder segment out. But yeah, and I'll also replace uh, the stage that we currently have here, the RZ20 stage, with the HM7 stage, even though we have to do the complicated thing where we ignite two engines first and then four engines. But it'll be more efficient and help us out. Well, I mean, I don't even know if that's necessary anymore because it is lighter. Maybe I shouldn't make it lighter. Uh, maybe I should like burn off some of the fuel earlier or something. Hmm. Because we're not going to be taking advantage of this stage. So uh, an effective 1.5 thrust weight ratio at, at Mars, maybe that'll be good. But yeah, we'll replace this and then we will construct a lander while doing other Mars things. Well, with that other Mars mission cooking, we get to focus on a string of mid-course corrections for our existing Mars missions headed in the 2024 window. Well, now 2025. So uh, here we are, and let's point at the node. And correction for this Mars lander. I mean, even though this has non-retracting solar panels, there is a chance that on the first pass through Mars's atmosphere, they won't break off, I guess. It depends on exactly how much dynamic pressure they're suited to and how much we'll get. Okay, that's good enough for now. It's outside of the atmosphere, but we'll fix that when we get to Mars. And so SOI change alarm next. And of course we will 
turn to the sun, which will uh, cause all sorts of problems. I don't know if these even track, but yeah, let's go back. And then spin up. And this will be on its way, and our nice periapsis is totally changing. Well, now it's crashing into Mars. Okay, so this casually spinning, let's go over to the Mars tug. And the tug's correction, let's make sure it's doing the right thing though. Uh, this probably needs the engine. Okay, well that's pretty good. Let's get out of the atmosphere, there we are. The tug definitely does not go into the atmosphere. Though, you know, we could have a tug aero capture, that's another option, but it's not the option we've picked with this one. So anyway, it's on its way, it's uh, waiting on its RPWS, and yeah, alright, that SOI change. And next is Mars Supplies 2, which is the controller for the station as well. Here's Mars Supplies 2, a 23 ton module right now. And ignition. Somebody know that we might have an underpowered controller on the tug. I'll have to check on that. That the tug might not be able to tug too heavy a thing. Uh, the tug that we sent to the station obviously had too little. <laughs> this... Oh, 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 oh. What? what was all that about? We happen to be exactly at the right point where it couldn't tell what to do next, huh? Okay, so, well, this let's shift over a little bit. And that actually is a fairly good capture burn there. Uh, but we'll still go with the SOI change alarm. And this is so far arriving first. And it's very important to us module so that we can control the station though whether it can get to the station with the delta v it has who knows we might separate off the tug from that and send it over to this first uh, but that will require rendezvous too it's complicated anyway it's complicated doing the multi-piece version of this instead of like putting it all on one launch and then hoping for the best um, that's less efficient necessarily uh, this provides a lot more redundancy and you know, ability to test things, uh, each component separately. Uh, yeah, it's complicated. It's complicated when you're, send, you're sending things in different windows, which end up in a different phase around Mars, especially if they're aero capturing. Um, yeah, that's the downside to this. But anyway, we continue with the mid-course corrections with Mars Lander M. For our nuclear tug's first mission, I think it's actually going to probably send over a larger Mars tug, one more capable. We have to check the boil-off situation on the Nerva. If it's good, then do I trust that result and send over a Hydrolox stage? I mean, I would love to be able to use Hydrolox over at Mars to do all the stuff instead of Hypergolics. But sometimes boil off tricks me. <laughs> sometimes boil off tricks me. Let's put it that way. Okay, so this one really a bit short on fuel, even though it had more delta v to start off with than the other lander, being that it had the AJ10 190s instead of the older versions. Hey, ignition. No, well, that seems fine. We'll go with the SOI change here. Of course, it has to dip into the atmosphere, so we'll need another correction when we get into the SOI. But for now, it is okay. And back to the sun, please. Oh, actually, this has tracking solar panels, so no problem. Well, yeah, th that'll be a fine orientation for now. Okay, so finally, the Duna 4, which is a science probe. But we have to wait 29 days for that. Uh, the Mars lander won't be done by then anyway, so that is the next thing we'll do. And then we'll talk about the tug that we're going to attach to the Nerva. Okay, so here comes the correction for this one. It's doing some signs here in high... well, I don't know, I suppose it must be high over the sun. No, it looks like for this one we didn't even have an encounter yet. 
That's special. Okay, well, let's uh, go ahead and do this then. Super important sort of correction. But ah, there it is. Okay, that's definitely good enough. And hopefully I don't have to turn it towards the sun. Ah, that's good enough for now. All right, so we'll keep it there. And all of them are set. And we'll have the SOI change for this one. And actually, this is the first one we will pay attention to. That, But that's in 161 days. So Mars Lander N, the one with the new engines, uh, is done. So we should go to VAB and cook up something else. And like I said, something with the... The, the Nerva, something that will dock to the Nerva and use the Nerva to transfer. Okay, well, as it turns out, even though the last time I paid attention to it, it had hydrogen in it, uh, this time it's all gone. It's all gone. So, yeah, we would have to bring up the hydrogen as well. Uh, well, we'll keep that in mind. Probably want to top off the Arizona and NTO. It's a good thing the hydrogen wasn't completely full initially, so... I guess it's not too bad that it all went away. And of course, we'll be filling it up right when it's going to transfer the thing. So that'll be a little bit more convenient. Well, that's the idea anyway. We'll see whether it's really more convenient. Uh, yeah. It's going to be interesting. But we'll try it, and we'll try it with a tug. So let me now go to the VAB and do that. But I had to see first whether we needed the... Uh, payload to bring up the hydrogen, and in fact we do. Alright, so what we have here is a very different Mars tug. This time I'm using the Transtar engines, since, well, here we are. We've unlocked them, so now we're going to use them. And they provide, of course, more Delta V if we unlock this tank. We see nearly 7,000. I put three engines so that the burn time won't be too horrible. And it's about 41.5 tons altogether there. So much heavier than the launcher would normally be able to send to Mars. And so we're relying on the Nerve, oh sorry, Nerva, I've been playing KSP 2 too much. Uh, the Nerva uh, with, well, we can't really refuel it completely. Uh, so the Nerva up there can carry 800,000 liters. Right now we can only carry 480,000 because, well, the launcher is missing two of its boosters and that's because we don't have a pad that can carry this much. Well, uh, enough to completely fill up the Nerva 2. So once we have the version with four boosters, we'll be able to fully fuel the Nerva 2, but right now we can't. So we have to make do with what we've got. And uh, will the Nerva 2 be able to push this out all the way? Probably not. Uh, we'll see exactly what it can push out. And then of course, since it's a tug, it's the ideal payload for testing out the capabilities of the Nerva 2 because it can complete the transfer to Mars all on its own. In fact, it could probably transfer itself to Mars, but that won't be good because it won't be able to tug things around. And I uh, apparently did have an underpowered controller on the other ones, so I've upped this to 140 tons thought about doing the long-term space habitation avionics, but uh, it gives us a little bit less power consumption, but overall it's not too different. So I left it be since we've got this one tooled. And so we've got the docking port on top, it's attached. Uh, there's a docking port at the bottom of this stage, of course, uh, otherwise it won't be able to dock to the Nerva. And it's got the RZ-20s in order to get over there. And actually, why don't we just move those closer in so that, well, if one fails, there's a tiny chance that things will work out a little bit better. Tiny, tiny chance. But then again, let's not go too close because the Nerva has to dock there. So, yeah. And then we have the RCS propellant here, in this case, Aerozine 50 and NTO because... The Nerva will, and the Nerva stage has Aerozine 50 in NTO, so we need to top it off. Uh, hopefully, we won't be using too much of that in order to get over there, but we'll see. I mean, all this, to some extent, we need to see how much we use in everything in order to refine it a little bit. Uh, we also have to worry about exactly how much Delta V we'll use for rendezvous because right now you see 9,720. Hopefully we'll make orbit with at least 300 meters per second left in this stage in order to help with the rendezvous, otherwise we'll be in somewhat of a pickle, but I would expect that that's the case. So, anyway, 
that is what we'll try for as far as this is what will we call this Mars tug T for trans star maybe so TS okay so that's how it is and it doesn't have the Mars transfer stage of course because Nerva is being used for that instead it has this big fuel tank to fill it up and well it does have the RZ20s and some liquid oxygen all right so we do have some tooling and let's see what that is uh, there is a tank and then this tank is not tool it's the same diameter as the old hydrogen tank because we but we made it smaller so that this rocket can carry it and then also there was a tank up uh, the, the main tank for the tug so those are things being tooled so we'll just tool all tool all there all right well, another expense, but let's get it built. Oh, right, we have to modify because we have just a little bit too much MMH and Mon3 on here. Okay, fine. All right, so we've already built that mission and our missions to Mars are still on their way. So I've decided that I will send a Mars lander to the Nerva as well. Nerva. Nerva as well, so... We are going to, I guess with the other one I had the solar panels accidentally tweaked into that because I made the tank smaller. Anyway, I have decided to uh, go ahead and pack the lander on one of these refiller modules and we'll see how that works out for us. So that will go up as well and make use of the Nerva instead of a full transfer stage. Is it worth it? No, well, I don't know, but we've got the Nerva up there anyway, so we might as well try it out. And I have made the lander larger by a subtle amount uh, in order to take advantage of it. So, I mean, it's not really that much larger because I would have to make the heat shield larger as well. Uh, so there's somewhat diminishing returns. But one thing I did was I added an extra engine. So now we have five trans stars on here instead of four. And I made this as big as I could without having to retool it, basically. And that gives us a little bit of extra delta V there. So. Uh, that is the situation with that and we'll just get that ready to be sent over and maybe I'll do something else with the Nerva too. I think we should probably have a habitat, a transfer habitat for the crew. We'll start getting that ready. That'll probably be the next thing. We've got some time until the actual window but I should actually probably bring up the window. So 2026 window. Seems nice. Uh, 3,600 meters per second for the ejection and uh, it won't be the right final orbit in this initial orbit I guess I should type it in 5 degrees because that's what it is out of Kuru but yeah it doesn't make a whole lot of difference at all but okay uh, the final orbit we uh, it shouldn't make too much difference for this as either so yeah it just, ch just changes the insertion delta V which I'll be calculating on the fly anyway. All right, so, all right, well, this is Mars Lander in two. Okay, so with that, we are now managing our first arrival. Unfortunately, as I got close to the SOI change, it's decided to deny me its existence. Um, why does it always seem to do that? Yeah, it says at least I've got the Kerbal Alarm Clock to help me out here, but yeah, I'm not in Time Warp or anything and it's not showing. Let me just click on things. Nope, uh, this one, it really doesn't want to show me. This one, it shows me the maneuver and encounter and everything, but this one, nope. <sighs> Even KSP-1 has issues. All right, let me get rid of the alarm and hop to it. So this is the science mission we're dealing with. And ultimately, hopefully, we can not only do the science around Mars, but also around Phobos and Deimos. I believe it has to be in a high inclination. Yeah, we've got the orbital perturbation experiment with its requirements. So nine years, though, nine years. I want to base everything off of it, but I don't think anything else will be interfered with when it comes to having a high inclination. So we might as well. 
All right, so here it does show me my SOI change, thankfully. No, no, it disappeared. <laughs> okay. Okay, now let's see. We do have an uh, inclination of 124. I'd like it just to be polar. Well, hmm. Maybe we should reconsider that, because if I want to get to Phobos or Deimos later on, that won't be ideal. I mean, not impossible, but just not ideal. Where are Phobos and Deimos hiding out anyway? Do they seem to be missing around here? See my missions? Oh yeah, their orbits were just really faint. Anyway, we're definitely coming in on the opposite side from where we want to be coming in. But I would like a lot of inclinations, so... It's not going to be easy to get to Phobos or Deimos, but at least we should be going in the same direction as them. Okay, ignition. I think the minimum for the orbital perturbation experiment is 50 degrees. So we'll take that, nearly 60 degrees. And that's okay. And we will capture loosely. We'll have to check on the eccentricity requirements though. Okay, seems like 1000 will do the trick. And communication lines are going out in a way that should be all right for periapsis. So we are okay for now. Uh, should still be charging on the way in. Let's go to periapsis. Oh, it's rolling all over the place, but that's all right. It's panels are tracking. All right, everything seems to be running except for telemetry, which is already in. RPWS is running and that video imaging is running. Everybody seems happy right now. And this stage can capture us. In fact, even if we lost communication, uh, it running itself out would not hurt us in any way, I don't think. But it is fairly long, so let's get started. Okay, well, I think I'm okay with a five-day orbit, so we didn't take nearly that much to capture. And leaving it loose, of course, will enable us to correct our inclination to get to Phobos and Deimos easier. So that'll be good. And yeah, there we are. And well, I'm not five day orbit, sorry. It's a nine day orbit, but that's fine too. Uh, it's only, it was five days to Apoapsis that I was looking at. But this is fine. That's well, Phobos and Deimos are definitely not going to interfere with it. So that's okay, and all the instruments should be running, but let's double check. That's the important thing, they are here for the science. So we're going to get a whole bunch of science from this because we actually don't have that much science for once. We aren't even researching anything right now. So we can get some more things, and maybe there are little surprises like more AJ-10s that people saw in some paper somewhere, <laughs> and, and we'll try to make the argument that since we've got the AJ-10-190 legitimately that maybe we can use some of these other ones, I don't know. After all, the the Transtar one is exactly the stats of an AJ-10-190 just with better ISP. Uh, same failure stuff, same burn time, everything. So yeah, well, okay. We'll see what other interesting stuff they have in store for us. But for now, this is here, and next time we will take care of the other four missions that are arriving, and then we'll be looking to the 2026 window. It's real quick around here as far as these windows are concerned. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.